All right, everybody, welcome to Bayside Chapel at home. Hey, it's 6.59 on Wednesday night. We're just getting ready for Bible study. want to thank you for being with us tonight. We're going to stall for just a minute while the people from YouTube Live and Bayside Chapel, depotbay.online.church, come online. Hey, when you get online, go ahead and let us know that you're here. You can just uh, give us a wave, give us a shout, uh, let us know that you can hear us okay. Also, I'm going to put up on the screen the online connection card. Go ahead and uh, fill that out when you hit send. If you have any prayer requests, it'll come right to my private email box. And we'd love to pray with you. Also, if you're new to Bayside Chapel at home, then you can um, let us know. And we will be able to have some information uh, so that we can keep in contact with you. Also, let me remind you, this Sunday morning, we will be sharing around the Lord's table together. So if you're in the building, you don't have to worry. We'll have communion ready. But if you're going to be watching us on Facebook Live or YouTube Live or BaysideChapel.DepotBay.Online.Church, then you can go ahead and make sure you have your juice, your crackers, or your, your bread, and we'll celebrate around the Lord's communion table at the end of service. Hey, in case you missed it on Sunday, we started a new series called The Bible Doesn't Say That. If you didn't have a chance to watch it when we're done tonight with Bible study or here in the next couple of days, you can watch it online on Facebook. You can go back and watch it online at YouTube or on our online.church platform. And I believe this is really what the Lord wants us to listen to right now. So this Sunday will be part two. Again, 9.30, we'll meet in the building for coffee and donuts, and then 10 o'clock, we'll be live in the building and across all three platforms. Hey, tonight, as we get ready for Bible study, it's my honor to introduce uh, a, a friend to the church. His name is Bob Carver. Uh, Bob is a, a credential minister. He's been traveling around the country, uh, listening and following the leading of the Lord. And so the other day, he talked to me. He said that the Lord had laid some things on his heart, and as we began to look at it, he used a word that we've been using a lot this year, and it's called reset. And as we've been saying, our theme for 2021 is that we need a reset. Remember our scripture in Psalms 51.10 is that the Lord would create in us a new heart that he would renew or reset a right spirit in us. And if you and I are ever going to be the people that God designed us and he desires us to be, then Lord, then we need to ask the Lord to help us to reset our way of thinking so that we can honor him with everything that we say and everything that we do. So tonight, as Pastor Bob brings the word, I want you to listen. I want you to be attentive. But more than anything else, in just a minute, we're going to pray. And I want you to ask the Lord, God, how can this word fit into my life so that I can be everything that you've designed me and that you desire me to be? So let's pray together. Father, thank you for the opportunity we have to gather in your presence. Lord, I pray that even across these digital platforms, that you would help us to understand how much you love each and every one of us. Father, we pray right now for Michelle Brown and her foot, that you would just allow her foot to heal and to get better in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for Olga this morning, that you would just touch her and minister to her. I pray for Betty Moranti, God, that you would just help her to be more steady when she walks and other needs that we might not know of. God, we lay them at your feet this, this night, and we ask that you would help and intervene in every situation. God, we pray over the next few minutes as Pastor Bob shares the words that you've laid on his heart, we pray that you would have our hearts be open and our ears be open to hear the word and to receive it. God, that it would truly change us and help us to be the people you want us to be. Lord, help us to be attentive let your word speak to our hearts tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Now listen, here's Pastor Bob. He's going to share with you the word that the Lord has laid on his heart. And then in just a few minutes, I'll be back and we'll 
wrap up tonight together. So looking forward to this Bible study time. God bless you. All right, Pastor Bob, take it away. Thanks, Pastor John. For those of you who don't know me, um, my name is uh, Bob Carver, and uh, welcome to the Wednesday night Bible study. Although it's going to probably take a little bit different format than we've been used to in the past. Uh, many things have been happening around uh, our world. Many of the brothers and sisters have been very concerned, and this sermon that I'm going to share, or message I'm going to share with you today, is entitled, Repledge of Allegiance. While I was over in Missouri a, a couple of weeks ago, I was asked by a little church there in Marceline, Missouri, to share uh, encouragement and a word of encouragement to the congregation concerning all the things that are taking place in the world around the presidential election. This is a, a result of that and also a recent uh, reset, if you will, from the Lord as to, uh, for me personally, and how I need to change my heart and my mind and the way I'm thinking about the things that are happening around us. So please join with me as we go through a, a message, if you will, entitled Pledge of Allegiance. Breaking news. Biden wins. Prophecy that Trump will be the president for a second term are false. Nationwide prayers by Christians for Trump to be reelected go unanswered. Widespread voter fraud reports in swing states. Nation's capital under siege by rioters. The nation is divided. News headlines like these fill the social media and uh, television news. It brings a lot of questions to our mind. Are we not one nation under God, indivisible? I looked up the meaning of indivisible, indivisible in the dictionary, meaning unable to be divided or separated. Who is the United States of America? What do we stand for? Who are we to the world? What do, we, what do they know us for? What Does what happens in the United States affect them also? Doesn't God's word say that he forms nations and sets up kings over them? Daniel 2.21 Did God have a purpose in founding our nation? Does our support of Israel matter? Does this presidential election even matter to the rest of the world? How do these events fit into God's plan? What in the world is going on? Many of us as believers are crying out for answers, but we need spiritual eyes and ears to understand. Now we're going to need spiritual eyes and spiritual ears to understand what's happening. Having eyes do you not see, and having ears do you not hear? So he said to them, How is it that you do not understand? Mark 8, 18 and 21. And remember Elijah prayed and said, Lord, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened his eyes, 2 Kings six seventeen. His servant uh, then saw myriads and myriads of angels in their chariots and and dressed in their war garments and swords and shields surrounding them, as he said, those who are with us are greater than those who are against us. And so we need these same spiritual eyes. He says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down, and the snow from the heavens, and do not return there, but water the earth, and make it bring forth bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eaters. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the things for which I sent it. Isaiah 55, 8-11. Many of us attended a camp meeting this past July. God was preparing us in advance for the things we're seeing and hearing now. 
The camp meeting theme for 2020 was the armor of God. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Ephesians 6, 10 through 12. Be sober and vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, steadfast in faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brothers in the world. 1 Peter 5, 8, 9. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of strong mind. 2 Timothy 1, 7. We need to take a stand in the authority we have in Christ. Then the seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy, and nothing by any means shall hurt you. Luke 10, 17 through 19. Now, this is a time for us to be still, but not to be silent. The nations raged, and the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, and the earth melted. He, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Psalms 46, 6 and 10. Why do nations rage? And people's plot a vain thing. The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take control together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in derision. Psalms 2, 1 through 4. And since we have this same spirit of faith, According to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believed and therefore speak. 2 Corinthians 4.13 This is a time to degree, to bind, to cast out and make our stand. Assuredly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth, Concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Matthew 18, 18 through 20. Now we have a lot of scriptures today and, and uh, the Lord downloaded these scriptures to me in this order as an encouraging message and I'm doing nothing more than just sharing with you what I was hearing in the Spirit. While it is true that we should not be joined to anyone Uh, in any way, who is a false prophet, it is also true that we should not be causing division amongst the believers either. Do we remember what happened when they were all in one accord? Acts chapter 2, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and what resulted? Hang in there. And remember, they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had had prepared for Mordecai. Esther 7.10. And we know that all things work out together for good for those who love God and those who are called according to his purpose. Romans 8, 28. And the Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. Remember, twice as much, Job forty two ten. So we should be praying uh, for all of our brothers and sisters in the uh, body of Christ even if it would appear that they got it wrong. Now, it is time to unite together, a time to reset. And here is our Pledge of Allegiance. We may want to read it out loud. If you can see the words on your screen, we're just going to kind of make a a re-pledge. I know it's the 2021 theme here at uh, Bayside Chapel is to reset. And and after I had heard these scriptures, 
the Lord said to me, Bob, let me reset you. And these are the scriptures that came to mind, and I want to share them with you. And we might want to speak them out as a decree uh, into the earth. So feel free to to uh, read them out loud and speak along with me for those of you at home. Reset. We voted once for all time. We chose Jesus to be our Lord and King for all eternity. We prayed once for all time. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Matthew 6, 9 and 10. Repledge of allegiance. We pledge allegiance to Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, King of Kings, to the glory of the Father in heaven for all eternity. We will serve him and his government with grateful hearts. We will be ambassadors of the kingdom of God and will proclaim it to the nations. We will declare God's word of truth to every living creature on the earth and in heaven. These things he has spoken to us, that in him we may have peace. In the world, we will have tribulation, but we will be of good cheer, for he has overcome the world, John 16, 33. Peace he leaves with us, peace he gives to us, not as the world gives, but does he give to us. So we will not let our hearts be troubled, neither will our hearts be afraid, John 14, 27. We, his people, who are called by his name, humble ourselves and pray and seek his face and turn from our wicked ways. Then he will hear from heaven and will forgive us our sins and heal our land. Second Chronicles 7.14 For he has appointed a new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness is to dwell. Second Peter 3.13 And in the days of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to another people. It shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Daniel 2.44 For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall be no more. Indeed, we will look carefully for his place, but it shall be no more. Indeed, we will look carefully for his place, but it shall be no more. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The wicked plots against the just and gnashes at him with its teeth. The Lord laughs at him, for he sees that his day is coming. Psalms 37, 9 through 13. But the saints of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Daniel 7.18 You will make us kings and priests of our God, and we shall reign on the earth. Revelation 5.10 For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Isaiah 9, 6-7 It is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God will prepare for those who love him. 1 Corinthians 2, 9. Now it shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the, house, the, mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills. The people shall flow to it. Many nations will come and say, Come, let us go up to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion law will go forth, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between many nations, and rebuke strong nations afar off. They will beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. But everyone will sit under his own victory, 
and no one will make them afraid. For the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken. Micah 4, 1 through 4. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Matthew 6, 13.